Hi guys, welcome to another Reaper blog tutorial. In this video, we're looking at a couple more of my uh, video processor presets that I've built, things to help you make videos using Reaper. These things have helped me so much over the past couple of months. And what they are, are a border, a rule of thirds grid, and a 16 by nine safe area. Let's start with the border. And one of the reasons why you might want to have a border around your video window so here's the thing about this video, like it should go to the full frame, right? I want it zoomed out, but I need to know where the edge of the frame actually is so that I'm not aligning, trying to align text to something that doesn't make sense, things like that. So I set up this essential border. This will always show me what the frame of the video window is. And that's based on the setting in project settings. So I've got it on a 1080p frame size. Uh, so it's always going to show me that uh, a frame that is 1080p. Well, actually, it's it's gonna it's gonna scale up and down as needed, uh, but it's always going to show me what what the max frame size is uh, of the video as I export it. So if I want to fix this so that it's not scaled down and missing something, and sometimes you're you're zooming in and out on something, uh, and it's very easy to have it maybe like this. And if you didn't have that uh, border preset like this, you might export it and it's not 100% filling the frame. Let's pop out the video processor window. And I have used this on the monitoring effects chain, but you can put it right on an item. You can put it on a track. You can put it on a track above uh, your main video. If you're using it in the monitoring effects chain, it's not going to be exported with your video. So just as a guide, that's how I designed these to be used. But you could also put them on individual video clips if you want to add a border or a grid or something like that. JT essential border for use on video items or in monitoring effects. Four parameters in the code, they're called RGB and wet. And in the um, parameter list, RGB for red, green, and blue, and opacity. So you can blend the colors to change the border color. Right now it's on a yellow. There's a hidden parameter for setting the thickness. So just for the demonstration purposes, I'm gonna set this to 20, and it makes a nice big yellow border around our video frame. And this is going, it, the frame uh, shrinks when you're using this. So when you change the thickness, it's going to go inwards. 120 that makes the visible area of the video smaller, but it makes a larger frame. It doesn't change the export video size. Anyway, so if I set this on 20, we can change color. So now it's just green. Now it's black. Now it's blue. Now it's cyan. Now it's white, etc. And you can change the, the opacity. I wouldn't really recommend changing the opacity um, unless you really need to, just because it looks a little ugly. When the two rectangles are combined, it makes a, a, a more intense corner, which looks a little ugly, not really intended. If you double click any of the knobs, they will go to a 50% gray. Uh, what's actually going on here is it's four different rectangles. The vertical ones are the same height as your video setting. Horizontal ones are the same width as your video. And then it's the thickness that you set here, and then they're positioned on the edges. It's, it's pretty simple, but it was actually a little bit tricky to set that up. And I wouldn't want you guys to have to do that on your own. Uh, so I am going to share these presets for you guys. You'll have to go to my newsletter, sign up for my newsletter. If you're already on the list, there'll probably be an email shortly with um, the download link. There's always a download link at the bottom of my newsletters. And if you're on Patreon, there will be a link there as well. I don't want anyone to miss out on these. It's free to sign up for this stuff. And if you're making videos, then I think you'll find these really helpful. So that's the first one. That's the border. Another thing you can do with a border is if you have a video on top, like this one here. So I have this video resized. And if I want a border around it, let's go to Add. I do plug in. I'm going to grab the video processor, drop that in, choose my preset, JT Essential Border, put that before the video so it goes around the outside. 
Let's set this to 12. Remember to hit save anytime you're setting the thickness, you need to hit save. And now if we zoom in here, we've got a border around the uh, picture in picture window. So that's how that works. These are set up for 16 by nine. I think most people are going to be using 16 by nine videos, but if you resize your videos, it may not work. So if I crop the edge, that disappears. I don't know how to fix that, but if you keep them on 16 by nine, it'll work fine. The rule of thirds grid. It's a classic photography and uh, art composition concept where you want your focal point to be on one of these four points, essentially. Framing up a, a person for a portrait, it would be, portrait would probably be the other way, but you'd, you'd like to have one of the eyes on uh, the rule of thirds intersections. So um, four main points where you could have the most interesting part of your video uh, would be on there. And often you want uh, maybe horizons on there. I probably can't actually resize this to make that work. Yeah, so if I want to follow the rule of thirds grid, it would have to be something like that, where I, I, I had to zoom in 1.3 and then uh, change the vertical position down slightly. So right there is too far. Uh, you can see it's coming off the top. So something like that. That would be a better composition uh, than leaving it like that. There. So that's one example of reframing a shot to fix a composition. Not always ideal, but sometimes you have to. And the rule of thirds grid uh, preset that I made for the video processor can help you do that. So again, the controls are very simple. Red, green, and blue, and opacity, thickness of the lines. So it's going to default to magenta, but you can change this to any color. If you want white, you can do that. If you want it um, just a very light overlay, I would do something like that. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, that's not too much in the way. It would be too, uh, too thick of a line to actually use. Yeah, to actually use it, that's pretty good. And again, this is just drawing four different rectangles and they're just positioned uh, on thirds instead of on the edges. The next one is the 16 by nine safe area. This is to help you align text. So let's look at this full screen. So what we have here is a 3.5 and a 5% safe area. And it's just to make sure that nothing gets cut off, especially text. You never know if a, a screen is going to cut off the edge of something or if it's going to shrink it. Uh, this ensures that all the important information, such as closed captioning or uh, text overlays, subtitles, are all within the safe area and will never be cut off. Um, it also looks more visually appealing to not have stuff go right to the edge. And it's just kind of an insurance to make sure that your your text, mostly for text like lower thirds titles, don't go below or to the left of this line. Usually it's this area here you're most concerned about. So the only difference here with the controls are a second set of colors. So I like to use green and yellow for my safe areas. Um, but again, you can change any of these colors. You can resave the preset so that it loads up with your favorites every time. The top colors are the outside grid and the uh, second set of colors is for the inner grid. And so just to summarize, these are video processor presets, load them into the video processor. You can put these on individual items. You can put them on MIDI clips that are uh, stretched out over top of your timeline uh, as a kind of an adjustment layer. If you want these grids to be visible when you're exporting your video. You want to have that in your timeline or on a track. And if you just want them in your monitoring, this video preview that you have here, you want them in your monitoring effects chain only, or just remember to turn the stuff off before you export.
but with them in your monitoring effects chain, you can just keep them running. Uh, so every video project that you work on, they're always here and ready to go with your last used settings. Really simple concept, but very useful. And it's not something that comes with Reaper natively. I had to make these on my own after lots and lots of trial and error, and uh, it's been working fantastic. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support on Patreon. Visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.